Police fire gunshots to disperse protesters over rising cost of living in Mina. TCN says gas shortage responsible for Sunday's national grid collapse. Six confirmed dead, 11 critically injured in a Boeing road crash. And on the foreign scene, four Senegal political stakeholders remain divided over postponement of presidential election. Hello and welcome to Trust TV's news update. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thanks for joining us. Now the news. Gunshots were fired by operatives of the Nigerian police force to disperse residents of Mina, the Niger state capital, who were protesting against the escalating cost of leaving. As early as 7 a.m. on Monday, a group of women blocked the Mina Road, the Mina Bida Road, at the popular roundabouts to express their grievances over the rising cost of food items. They were later joined by men, bringing vehicular movements to a halt. Efforts by the police to control the crowd and clear the road nearly turned violent as protesters asked the police to leave, prompting the police to fire several shots in the air to disperse the demonstrators. The spokesperson for the Niger State Police Command, DSP Wasua Biodo, could not be reached for comments on the matter. Pandemonium broke out on Wednesday, January 31st as a clash unfolded amongst alleged student cult groups from Community Secondary Grammar School and Ikotu High School in Ikotu, located in the Ali Mosho local government area of Lagos State. The incident was a result of a long-standing rivalry between two groups within the schools. The altercation, which began during the closing hour, prompted nearby policemen to intervene to restore calm. Upon the officer's arrival, the troublemakers started hurling dangerous objects at them. The situation further deteriorated when the officers called for reinforcements and subsequently deployed tear gas canisters into the school premises to disperse the groups. The incident triggered a stampede resulting in several students sustaining varying degrees of injuries. There were reports that students with asthma allegedly slumped during the chaotic episode. In a tragic incident, a 300-level student of Adikunle Ajansi University in Ondo State was discovered dead in her room, situated outside the university campus. The lifeless body of Ife Lua was found on Saturday, prompting a police investigation that revealed she had been attacked by as yet unidentified assailant. The unsettling event has sparked panic and apprehension among the university's students, especially the female population. A concerned neighbor of the disease has called on the understate government to ensure justice for the victim. Confirming the incident, the public relations officer of the Ondo State Police Command, SP Fumilayo Odolami Omisoya, informed the press that investigations have been initiated. The police spokesperson also indicated that the killing is suspected to be cult related. A baby allegedly sold by a maid for 800,000 naira has been found in the market in the Shomolu area of Lagos State. An ex-user at Danny Slick is now in now deleted tweets had on Saturday raised an alarm that a maid hired through an agency absconded with the baby. The maid identified as Ruth Okeze from Anambra State reportedly absconded with the baby from the home in Shomolu around 2 a.m. on Saturday. After the report went viral on social media, the maid who was said to have been found in Ikurudu without the baby has confessed to selling the baby for 800,000 naira. In a post on his ex-handle on Monday, the Lagos Police Public Relations Officer Benjamin Hundey disclosed that the baby was rescued by the police after she was abandoned in Alade Market in the Shomolo area of the state. Today, he said the baby has since been handed over to her parents after they positively identified her.
In Ebony State, tragedy struck on the Afikmo Abakaliki Road as the Federal Road Safety Commission confirmed a fatal automobile crash on the Onueke access, resulting in six casualties. The sector commander, FRSC Igwe Nabuife, revealed that the accident involved 17 individuals with six fatalities and 11 critically injured. The collision, which occurred around 11.50 a.m. at Onuedu Onueke Axis, a south local government area of Emboi, involved three vehicles, two articulated vehicles, and a commercial bus belonging to Peace Mass Transit. Wrong overtaking was identified as the cause of the multiple crash. The deceased have been transported to the mortuary at Alex Ekweme Federal Teaching Hospital at Bakiliki, while those injured are undergoing treatment. Nabife urged drivers to exercise patience, obey traffic rules and avoid dangerous driving practices to prevent such tragic incidents and save lives. In Katana State, a 14-year-old teenager, Mushin Ibrahim, has been killed by a J5 Peugeot vehicle driver who rammed into bystanders in the GBI local government area of the state. GBI is one of the Nigerian borders with Niger Republic, where most residents engage in various cross-border business for decades. An eyewitness, Surajo Aliyu, said on Monday in the incident that took place on Saturday at 11 a.m. around the Tudunwada Primary School, when officials of the Federal Operating Unit Zone B of the Nigerian Customs Service were on their way to buy food in GBI town. He added that the J5 driver who was conveying soya beans thought that the NCS officials were chasing him. And in politics, a federal high court in Abuja has dismissed the bail applications filed by the loyalist of the River State Governor Siminlai Fubara linked to the state assembly explosion. The police had instituted terrorism-related charges against them following their alleged role in the bombing of the River State House of Assembly in October of 2023. They were also accused of killing some police officers. The defendants are Chime Eguma Ezabalike, Prince Lukman Oladili, Kenneth Goodlock Basa, Siga Donald and Otweja Vanguard. The transmission company of Nigeria has clarified that the partial grid disturbance experienced on Sunday was a result of gas constraints at its Ibom Power Island feeding Eket, Ekim, Itu and Uyo transmission substations. In a statement signed by its general manager, Public Affairs, the TCN explained that during the partial disturbance, the total grid generation was 3,901.25 megawatts, just over three hours before the time of the partial collapse. While confirming the restoration of the affected part of the grid, the statement acknowledged the persistent low power generation in the country since January 2024, aggravating delay generation due to ongoing gas constraints. The TCN emphasized that gas constraints persist, impacting grid flexibility and stability, ensuring sufficient gas supply to power generating stations is crucial for grid stability as ample generation allows for better grid management in the event of sudden generation losses like this. The TCN pledged to investigate the cause of the treating of Sapelestine and Egmin power generating units. This is the news update on Trust TV. Up ahead. We took a look at why Bielsa residents express mixed reactions over environmental challenges. More news when we return. Please do stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. A recap of our top stories. Police fire gunshots to disperse protesters over rising cost of living in Mina. TCN says gas shortage responsible for Sunday's national greed collapse. And now to more news. The People's Democratic Party in Edo State on Sunday conducted an election to pick delegates that will participate in the party's February 22nd governorship primary. The exercise was, however, trailed by an 
Opera as nine out of the 11 PDP governorship aspirants boycotted the exercise. Also, the governor of Oyo State, Shane Makindi, who was the chairman of the three-man committee in charge of the Edo delegates' election, withdrew from the exercise. However, the governor of Inugu State, Peter Mba, who is said to be the deputy chairman of the committee, commended the large turnout of party members for the delegates' election. Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki described Makindi's withdrawal from the process as unfortunate, but said, it would not undermine the credibility of the exercise, which he said witnessed a large turnout of party members. In Bielsa State, residents in Genoa metropolis are sharing mixed reactions regarding the performance of the Governor Doye Diri led administration in the environmental sector. Trust TV correspondent Friday Epimoboe Peter explores public opinions on the government's environmental track record. Bayosa has over the years struggled with enormous challenges in environmental protection, which has become a major public interest for citizens in the state. Some of the residents who spoke to Trust TV News say the government has improved its effort in public waste disposal while calling for a robust approach in addressing other challenges. From my own point of view, uh, he did well because uh, in the place that they are putting those being the worst being aspects, he's parking the the people that he put in charge over the parking those being. They are doing the work well because if you are passing the metropolis, you are not seeing those being littered all over the states. But for the people that he put in charge of the Gota, during the uh, sanitation uh, day, they are not doing their work. They are just holding people that are passing by. Those, those being full, small time don't call back up. Even the security itself, in the try. So, in try. David Siasia and residents is calling for increased focus on the environmental sector and the second tenor emphasizing the need for a proper drainage system in the Yenagoa metropolis. We always get a, a flood, flood problem in Bayasa. Please, for the drainage, let all the drainage be leaked into, into the, <coughs> the big river side so that we cannot be having all those standing water that cause mosquitoes. Uh, but let, let him make sure that in the second tenor, this environmental sector concerning the drainage, let them work toward the drainage. Because when he enters some street, you will find out that it's not flood, just a rain. But people else will be flooded. Two days, three days, we will see people using a uh, generator to be dragging water out of their houses. And it's very bad for a state by us. Residents have alighted flooding as a prevalent issue in the state, urging the government to take decisive measures to prevent further occurrence. From Yanagua, Friday, the Bimobo Way Peter. Frost TV News. Yenagua. And away from Nigeria, in Senegal, the decision to postpone the presidential elections was well received by the former ruling Democratic Party, whose presidential candidate is Karim Wade. Wade's supporters were seen celebrating the postponement of the February 25th presidential election by President Marquis Sall. The decision follows, among other things, a dispute between their candidate and the Constitutional Council, accused of corruption by the former ruling party. Several opposition figures rejected President Marquis Sall's decision to postpone the election, with at least two of the 20 presidential candidates saying they would proceed with their campaign, scheduled to kick off on Sunday. South's tenure is scheduled to end on April 2nd. Senegal's electoral code requires 80 days' notice of an election, meaning the earliest the new vote could take place is the last week of April. West Africa's regional bloc on Sunday called for dialogue to resolve the political crisis. We welcome this decision because it renders us justice. This decision by the President of the Republic to postpone the elections is good because these elections could not be organized without Brother Abdul Karim May Sawade, who is the only viable, reliable alternative for the emergence of this country. It's really sad that a few hours before the campaign, a person, in this case Mr. Makisal, 
who in 30 or 40 days will no longer be president of the republic should make a decision for the people. I don't think this is appropriate. What he has just done could set a dangerous precedent for Senegal, and I think it's time he stopped. Now it's high time for all the nation's driving forces, civil society, and everyone else to rally around the essentials, because if this travesty goes through, I don't think Senegal deserves to be called a constitutional state. This postponement is unconstitutional coup d'etat. On that note, we call on the Senegalese people to stand up to fight this issue because we considered it to be a state banditry. The question now is, what will happen to Marcus Sun's presidency beyond April 3rd? Will he respect what the Constitution says? Everyone is waiting for the president's decision. At least 112 people have been killed by forest fires in Chile's Valparaiso's region. Local authorities have said. Gabriel Boric declared the state of emergency and said he would make all necessary resources available to tackle the situation. It is believed to be Chile's deadliest forest fire on record. Many of those affected were visiting the coastal region during the summer holidays. A health alert was put in place in Valparaiso by the health ministry. The ministry called for the suspension of elective surgeries and authorized temporary field hospitals to be set up. Medicine students nearing the end of their studies will be hired to help ease pressures on the health service, the ministry announced in the same statement. Rescue services have struggled to reach the most badly affected areas, and Interior Minister Carolina Toha said the debt toll would reach much higher figures in the coming hours. The Chilean government has urged people not to travel to the areas hit by the fires. In sports, the Minister for Sports Development, Senator John Enno, has said that the Kano Golf Club is an, of immense cultural importance to West African history. Speaking at the Kano Golf Club Captain's inaugural tournament featuring 251 amateur and professional golfers, the Minister pledged to collaborate with the appropriate ministry to label the golf course as a national heritage site. We have a Kano Golf Club that has dated since 1903. And then you listen to the fact that the golf club itself started in 1909. And then you appreciate the fact that this will be the first, not just in Nigeria, but in the sub-region. Immediately I return to Abuja. I'm going to begin work with my colleague who is Minister of Culture and entertainment to see how we can begin you know the beginning work we can commence it to having to you know a label and define the canoe golf club as an heritage center and finally in sports on a side note Kurt hammering the last surviving player from the 1958 World Cup final has died aged 89. The Sweden midfielder, who spent the majority of his career in Italy, scored 17 goals and 32 appearances for his country. Hamrin, known as Kure, played in the 1958 World Cup final on home soil when Sweden were beaten 5-2 by Brazil. At the 1958 World Cup, Hamrin scored for Sweden in the quarter-final win over the Soviet Union and the semi-final victory against West Germany. But they were beaten by a Brazil side that included Pele, Garincha and Mario Zagallo. The highlight of Hamrin's club career came in 1969 when he lifted the European Cup with AC Milan as it beat Ajax 4-1 for the second of the club's seven triumphs in the competition. During stints with AC Milan, Fiorentina, Juventus, Padova and Napoli, Hamrin scored 190 Serie A goals, making him ninth in the league's all-time scoring charts. And with that, we've come to the end of the news at this hour. Don't forget to follow us for more news, programs and documentary on our social media platforms. On behalf of myself and the news team, thanks for watching.